See, we have a quorum. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'd like to see if we have an approval of the agenda. Madam Chair, I move to approve the revised agenda, but addressing the consent agenda items individually. All of them? Just individually. Okay. All yeah. right. So it will be just the... Okay. And I second. Each one separately. Okay. Each separately. Okay. Um, all in favor? We have a first and a second. All in favor? Okay. Uh, Scott, we have some recognitions today? Yes. Oh, you know what? Did we do the plan? We didn't. Hang on a second. One second. Do we have an ROTC? Let's stand. We'll stand, we, we, we'll stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Did I have a flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, We have a lot of folks recognized tonight, so I'm going to get right to it. We're going to start with the winners of the Gathering of Eagles uh, Foundation Scholarships. If uh, we could get those in there. I have the names um, and I have, I have the certificates in this folder. Oh, you have certificates? Okay. Okay. We have quite a few of them, so it's taken a little while to get them all together. <laughs> <laughs> As they're coming in, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, MPS entered into an agreement with the Gathering of Eagles Foundation to provide at least 10 scholarships to the National Flight Academy in Pensacola and at least three to the Space Academy in Huntsville. We ended up with 43 students from 14 schools winning scholarships, and that's what we have. So 
So it's a very good thing. So we got everybody in here? All right, I think we got all of them who are going to come. All right, I'm going to just read off the names in the order that I have them. Um, I have from Baldwin, Arts and Academic Magnet, Charity Harris, Hayden Jackson, and Joe Reed. All right, so next we have Jacoby Johnson. Is National Flight Academy. Haley Bonner. Hope I'm saying this right, Bakil Bozeman. We have Andrew Brown. We have Faith Brown. We have Tyler Cheatham. We have John Cuevas Colquitt. Nicholas Cook. Zayane Daniels. Elizabeth Diaz. <laughs> Leslie Diaz. <laughs> Kaysen Kelly. <laughs> Summer Lee. Leslie Morales. Uh, we have Corwin Nance. Jacob Nowden. Cora Osborne. Edward Pitton, <laughs> Justin Rivera, <laughs> Arian Singh, <laughs> Madison Sterling. Ariana Vaughn, Devin Vaughn, Tyler Vaughn, Randy Weaver, Wesley Wynn, Vincent Yu. Rashawn Stevens, Isaac Salmeron, Michael Minger, I think that's uh, all we've, we've got one more. Do we have? All right, if that's everybody, let's, uh, let's give them one big round of applause. Then.
Yep. So, each student will get this bag and a t-shirt oh, as a souvenir to honor their trip. And so, they'll get that later. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, next up, we have a group of students and educators responsible for the first Cognia STEM certification in the River Region. Will the STEM team from Brutech please join us up here? I believe they're back there in the hall. This uh, was an accomplishment years in the making and can be attributed to hard work by a number of people at Brutech. This is a Cognia STEM certification. Um, an official STEM review team from Cognia visited the school for two, two days to evaluate the school's STEM mission and vision. Uh, the Brutech STEM team includes engineering teacher Steve Ballard, media specialist Whitney Cunningham, English teacher Shannon Luster, IT teacher Christopher Lispa, Lispka, sorry, science department head Scott Lawrence, students Kyle Adams, Julia Fromm, Angelina Eunuch, and Brett Tolerson, Dr. Mickey Crenshaw on career tech, Christy Hatch, our STEM guru, uh, K Tool in data entry, assistant principal Jason Nord, and of course, principal April Lee. So, uh, Let's give them all a big round of applause. Next up, we have some future business leaders. Will the winners of the DECA competition please join us? DECA competition. DECA. The DECA competition. They're not. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're not. 
Hmm. I told him I was in a board meeting. Good, good. They look cute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was going to. Yes, I was going to. <laughs> All right, so we had four students who placed in the Alabama Decad Competitive Events and Conference in Birmingham and have qualified for the International Career Development Conference in Nashville. And let's see, our students that we had win were Nasia Crosby and Malaysia Aaron of Jeff Davis. They won in the startup business category, business plan category, and uh, we've got their certificates here. We have Jemiah Harris of Carver High, who won in the Quick Serve Restaurant Management Series. One there. We can go ahead and applaud, that's fine. Um, and then we have Cameron Stewart of Lee High. Uh, he won in the applica Accounting Application Series, and I was handed a note that he also scored a platinum plus on the ACT work keys assessment. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and give them all a big round of applause. Now. Next ones we have are two educators who are helping students avoid the brain drain that can set in during the summer break. Will Connell Vandiver and Daryl Woods, Woods please join us? Uh, Mr. Vander, Mr. Vandiver and Mr. Woods have been awarded the Educator of the Year Award by Bell Excel, a national nonprofit organization. Mr. Vandiver is the parent liaison at Carver Elementary and Arts Magnet, and we have some people from Carver here. We want to recognize them. Can you stand up. Okay. Well. <laughs> um, here we go. And um, Ms. Mr. Woods is a VP of Community Development with the YMCA, and together they run the Power Scholars Academy. Uh, Bell Excel chose to highlight this program out of 150 programs from across the United States. The program has helped more than 100 third graders gain an average of two months of reading skills and three months of math skills. Awesome. So that's a big accomplishment. Wow. Next up are our employees of the month, uh, Deborah Dixon and Diana Young. Do we have Deborah Dixon and Diana Young here? Oh, okay. Well, um, do we have Deborah's here? Okay. Okay. Um, Ms. Dixon is a first-year teacher who teaches fourth graders at Highland Avenue Elementary. According to Principal Courtney Giles, Dixon embodies excellence in education. She meets the needs of students with patience, kindness, and discipline. Uh, she just joined the Highland Avenue team in January, but she's made a big imp impact. Uh, she has set very high expectations for her students, and she ma maintains those expectations. The students in her class have gained a, lot, a new love of learning. And then we also have Diana Young, who from Halcyon and uh, elementary. She's a pre-K auxiliary teacher. She provides support in the classroom for 18 amazing pre-K friends each and every day. Collaborating with teacher Robin Redden, she ensures that learning and active engagement are part of the pre-K day. She supports the students at play while learning in center time while eating and transitioning throughout the day and she does it all with a smile on her face. According to Principal Shannon Schmidt, she is a blessing to pre-K and all students at Halcyon. 
and uh, each of them will receive a certificate suitable for framing and a $25 gift card uh, courtesy of Baptist Health. Let me, uh, is all our recognitions for now, but uh, we are going to have some special guests later on, so stay tuned. It's a bit more of a clear room, and uh, I have a few things to say. I don't have huge prepared remarks, but what I want to talk about for just a minute is how incredible yesterday's announcement was from Cognia, which is the former advanced ed, um, on accreditation. And I don't think anybody here really knows how incredible the work that has been done by the people in this room to make that happen. It was, um, Dr. Moore has led, she has led, and that's a big deal. But she's led a great team. I know, and I hope I don't leave anybody out, but Mr. Watts and Mr. Mitchell, Mr. Anderson, Ms. Gillis, Dr. Nettles, and Dr. Williamson, I think compromised the, the bulk of this team. What happened happened in a really short amount of time because they were so dedicated and, and worked. And I personally would like to give them all a huge round of applause. That was a really big deal. Now, just to clear, clarify one thing, we were never not accredited. But we were under a lot of scrutiny and uh, now we're not. So thank you all. Uh, let's see. Uh, we don't have we have no citizens' comments tonight. So, Mr. Watts, you want to talk to us about our financial January financial statement? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board, Madam <coughs> Superintendent. You should have before you the financial statement for the month of January which represents the fourth month of the fiscal year. That means that that's 33.3% of our fiscal year. The financial statement contains about six or seven different reports, including the balance sheet, which speaks to our financial position as of January, and our combined statement of revenues expenditures and changes in fund balance, which in private industry would, would be an income statement. As of January, uh, we ended the month with a fund balance of about $37.3 million. As you know, our, our state requirements is about $18.8 .8 million. So again, we ended uh, the month of January about $37.3 million in the fund balance. State requirement, $18.8 .8 million. So we are we'll, uh, pretty much almost double what the state requirements are. But we do want to keep in mind that much of these funds are budgeted for upcoming months. But we are proud to see that our expenditures are down. Although the fourth month represents about 32.3% of the budget, our expenditures are, about 30, at, are at about 32%. So we're happy about that. 
Uh, we also continue to monitor um, the proposed education, uh, the state proposed education budget, and we'll kind of see how that goes. We'll continue to monitor that. Um, we've already heard that the bond issue, I think it was, it was originally allocated to be about a billion dollars. I think they added an additional $250 million to that particular bond issue, and I think it has already passed, um, Mr. Walton, has it already passed the House or has it already passed committee? Past. past committee, about $1.2 billion. And so we're estimating, I think, Chad, about um, over, well over $30 million uh, that would be due to Montgomery to help us meet a number of needs. Um, so we're excited about that and we'll continue to monitor that, Madam President. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Watts? I have a few questions, and it'll be it'll be real okay. short. Um, thank you. Well, first of all, just thank you for everything across the board. The reserve is phenomenal. I just wanted to do some air clearing, if you will. Sure. I know that there were was talk um, in the media about procedures not being in place for uh, when the things happen. Um, it, is that true? And if so, uh, and or if not, have there been procedures put in place to address that, or have those procedures always been there in place? For the most part, most of those procedures was already there. You just had some people that did not follow them. And of course, those individuals, of course, as you know, uh, was reported uh, to the board and of course are dealing with um, other situations. But most of those procedures were already there. What we're doing now, we're going out and, and Recommunicating those procedures to everyone. Uh, we've already sent out um, a communication to all of our schools, had them to sign off on something. We also visited every single high school in the district and every single middle school in the district. Uh, we've already went to, I think, three or four of the schools, communicated with not just the principal and the bookkeeper, but the entire staff. And so we'll continue to do that until we reach every high school, every middle school, and all coaches and athletic directors throughout the district intend on having that completed this year. All right. And one other question, and I'll be done. Um, I know that, and, and I have to address it because we, you know, I think some of us have gotten phone calls, and people really think that we see the, the funds that are collected in the schools in the budget. If you would, I mean, just kind of click, is that something we would see in the budgets that you provide for us if someone's doing something actually inside of a school? If someone is doing something inside of a school, you all probably won't see it. Now, we do have procedures in place to detect certain, certain right. things. And of course, those are the things that we do bring to the board. Right. We also have a local school accounting department that visits schools, uh, review um, accounts and review just several different activities. And of course, when we do detect um, some mishandling of funds, then we deal with those and of course we bring those to the board. All right. That was it. Uh, Mr. Watts, um, in addition to that, the, uh, the bulk of some of that was through boosters funds and other things. We could look at a financial report from now until next year and we would not have seen that. So let's, I think you've made that clear if we go back and look at, because I did that. I went back, I had someone who is a certified public accountant, and he said there would be no way that we would have seen that because it never got to us. So for them to say the board allowed these things to happen, the board did not allow these things to happen. That, that is absolutely correct. I think that's what Ms. Smith was touching on right. too. So, so you're absolutely right. Uh, Ms. Briars, <coughs> if funds are collected and funds are deposited in a booster account, a booster is a totally Different. separate entity mm -hmm. from the Absolutely. school district. They have their own uh, taxpayer identification number. They have their own account. Mm -hmm. So we would not be able to de detect that unless certain things come up. There, there are certain uh, processes that we have or certain tools that we have to detect certain things. But other than that, um, if the, if the funds are collected and, and deposited in a booster account, there's really no way of us knowing about that unless uh, certain, certain some of those tools are discovered these things. And, and of course, this did happen in, in some situations. Yeah, but what I do like that you have implemented is when checks come in to those 
entities, that, that check has to come now to the school system and you notify the principal that it's there. So that's something that Absolutely. you have put in place. Yes, ma'am. So the public needs to know all of this. Right, okay. But that, I, I need to, I'd, I'd like to ask this. What, what specific policy, because I, I have, you know, found out some things that to me are, I could see how it happened. If we make a bid, okay, if, you, if you're going to come in here and, there, and we're going to bid on uh, uh, professional development or ask at risk whatever, and we have an out-of-state place that we have obviously approved thinking that they are going to give us professional development, thinking that they are going to help with the at-risk kids, and really that's one of those fictitious accounts because that's from what I'm hearing, that's exactly what happened. Only what happened is when you write the check, and it's from an out-of-state account, but the check is actually cashed right here, okay? That's the big red flag. What policy do we have in place right now that says when you write a check, and I'll, I'll make up a state, but I know the state. Let's call it Tennessee, okay? Let's call it Tennessee. And you hand, if you're a if you're a CSFO and you hand a principal or an assistant principal a check, which is from what I understand happened, and then they go right here in Montgomery and cash it, and I'm not gonna say who they split it with, but they will find out, I promise you. What, what, what policies do we have in place to assure that that will never happen again? In an effort, uh, Dr. Keith, not to, to speak too much about ongoing investigations. I'm just a little leery about even speaking about okay. that right okay. now. Okay, I just want to make sure. We, 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 as, we, we're we talking about we got blamed for this, and we would have never known. Well, I, I will And the just street say, is what I'm learning. Right. You know. I would just say that it's because of the professionals in finance and the examiners is why you do know about it. Okay. Because we detected these things. We worked very, very closely with the examiners and law enforcement. Um, in, 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 in all of these occasions, so that is why you do know about it. Okay. All right. Well, I hope so they get I, them all. May I answer yes. the, one, the one question? There, there are protocols in place when they are followed correctly. The protocols are in place to protect the system from any kind of illegal activity. Now, if someone steps outside of the protocol that has already been placed and approved by the board, and they step outside of it. For instance, we use, uh, we use invoices and uh, purchase, purchase orders, orders and requisitions. Now, if someone mm -hmm. steps outside of that and gets something going outside of that, then we are not able to necessarily keep up, it, up with it right at that minute because they have not followed. But the policies that you're talking about are in place. The procedures are in place. It's just that sometimes some people might step outside of that, and then it takes a little bit of work on our part to find out that they stepped outside of that procedure, okay. like running a stop sign. Okay, but Dr. Moore, what's, we, we're your board, we, we approve, or you know, pretty much approve, what you recommend. Is there a pop, because my understanding is if we approved a bid that we thought was for at-risk students or for PD, and th that place never really did that, and it's and a that, that, account. In all honesty, that more than likely did not come through me or through Mr. Watts or through okay. some, they avoided, Someone avoided the protocol, so it never came to me through. I, I, and I believe that because I've, I've heard or, this has been going on 14, yeah. 15 so, years. So that didn't come to us. But if it comes through us the proper way, then yes, there are policies and procedures in place to keep that from happening. Thank you, Mr. Watts. And at this time, I would like to interrupt our uh, our, our agenda to invite the Lee High School basketball team, the award-winning yes. state champion basketball team to join us. I want you to know that this was truly a magical <laughs>
33 to 1. They, they won 33. They only lost one. And they beat Mountain Brook, which has held the title for three years. So, so proud. Yeah. We, and you're one of my schools, yeah. 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 Just yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Y'all did tremendous. Good job. Uh, that's it. I think you said it. Thank y'all. Y'all made us all really proud here. Thank you. Well, Scott, thank you, thank you, thank you. Tell him to come back. <laughs> we need that picture. We need that picture. That's his picture. We need yeah, a picture. We want y'all's picture. Yes. <laughs> That's history. That's my friend right there. <laughs> they Miss Brantley will be proud. <laughs> Step in there? Yeah, that needs to be in the picture. The crust book got to move up. He's short <laughs> compared to this. There he is right there. That's the crust book. Oh, that's good. All right. I hope you found that worth uh, interrupting our regularly oh, scheduled yes, program. Oh, they <laughs> interrupt any time for students. Uh, these adults Mr. Here. Anderson, there you are. I want to introduce this just a little bit before he starts. I've asked Mr. Anderson because we are going to be having uh, some um, work done at different fiscal plants at the schools and things like that. So I wanted him, as we get things approved and we work on them, I've asked him to periodically, probably once a month, give us an update sort of ongoing of the projects that we have that are already ongoing or starting and where we are in the timeline of midway or almost to the end or completed. So you're going to be hearing more of this kind of information just as a general kind of to make you aware of what's going on out in the schools. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And what you have here, there's a little more information in this one that will be it won't be on a monthly basis, but I wanted to kind of give you some details of what our guys do behind the scenes. So you've got a snapshot of kind of each department that I gave you in the handout there, and there are many, many other things that they're doing on top of these items uh, throughout the district, and that's what kind of the back page is to the to the ones where you see the uh, where you see the spreadsheets. But we'll start with C and P. So go to the next slide, please. So C and P um, is. As you can see there, just from a snapshot with the on-site monitoring, what's very important is reimbursable meals. And I know Mr. Watts can attest to that when you're in a district like we are where we provide meals for our students. It's very important that we make sure we measure every little thing out so that the, the federal dollars, we get all of those federal dollars. So it's important that you have all the measurements right so that you get the full extent of what is coming to you and it doesn't come out of the general fund in this. The next area there is, is a small piece uh, that Ms. Beard has been working on is a, a equipment grant. And you can see some of the locations that we have there. We have a far greater list, and that's like a lot of these that you're going to see here. There's a far greater list that goes with it, but these are some of the more critical needs that you see here with this. But she's been working on a grant for these, uh, for these items here with the equipment grant, and you can see the different locations there. And one of the things that I've asked them to do too is as you can see that third column when you're talking about district, we want to make sure that we stretch as much as we can across the different districts because that's very important to you. You know, we as workers get so immersed in 
what's broken, what needs to be fixed. We don't think about just making sure we share that wealth across the different districts with what's going on. The bottom part there is the summer feeding program, which I think is tremendous. I mean, it keeps something up. You know, kids, kids in Montgomery should not go hungry. If you're eating uh, the breakfast, the lunch, the snack, the dinner, all throughout the year, you shouldn't go hungry. But to keep that up, we want to make sure our kids are fed throughout the summer too. So we provide that through, throughout the district and, and various areas with that. And you can see there is an equipment cost with those things as well, um, keeping up those things and making sure we can deliver it out to the different areas that we may need to get to with those things. And then the serve safe, safe certi certification with that. You know, that's important to make sure that we're handling the food and different things properly out there so we don't pass on any kind of illnesses. And I know we have that in the, in the media now big time. And we're not cross-contaminating different types of foods. So that's what that's for. And what uh, Miss Beard is kind of charged is to have at least two people at each location and all of her people at the central location that are served safe certified. Next slide, please. A little snapshot there, you got 360 employees uh, throughout the district and C&P. They serve roughly 25,000 meals a day. And then we also have other opportunities that we, we try to procure. I know you know about the LEAD Academy, uh, Valiant Cross and Word of Life are coming on board where we serve them a, uh, a meals as well and get those reimbursable dollars at no cost to the district and a revenue for those things and then I want you to take a look at that bottom bullet there. When Miss Beard arrived, we were in the red $3.8 million in C&P. Working along with Mr. Watts and Miss Beard, today you're at $500,000 to the good. So. Wow. And that, she did that and accomplished that in less than two years along with the help of Mr. Watts. Next slide please. Is, is Miss Beard in here? She is not. Uh, logistics. Logistics doesn't really work a lot of projects. You can think of them really kind of as the catch-all. I mean, and this is from a central, centralized thought, but logistics is also our custodians in the building. You see the floor here and clean, and our, our people did this as well. But they will go out and do random cleanings at different locations. When we were getting ready for um, the Cognia folks. They've worked several, several nights at Jeff Davis and several of our locations. But just to kind of some of the bullets, and I've highlighted a few areas there. When you're talking about the, we purchased some electrostatic uh, backpack sprayers. And I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to this stuff. But what it does is it ionizes the, the molecules in the water and the chemicals in there. And then when you spray it out, it will totally immerse and wrap uh, a, a subject. So if I sprayed a chair, it would wrap that whole chair all the way around it. What we were doing before was setting a bomb, letting it go off, come in, and wiping that, wiping that chemical bomb down afterwards. So we're not only having to go there, set it up, let it go off, come back later, wipe it all down, everything down. With this, we don't have to wipe it down. It has a 10-minute dwell time, and it handles the coronavirus as well. We can do an entire building, which we've done several several in the last couple of weeks and less than an hour or two depending on if it's a middle school high school or elementary the size of it but that has been really invaluable that's something that i want you to know that we're stocking up on uh, as far as chemicals and making sure we have that ready so if, if and when the coronavirus does involve does get here to montgomery or, or in alabama we'll be ready to get out there and do those sanit sanitizing at those different areas uh, Supply Works, we've kind of worked with them. Supply Works is a, is a part of Home Depot, which they work along with a, a source well contract, so it keeps us out of the bid law issues. But they're actually, we're starting to utilize them in some of our areas to help us with our limited manpower and delivering uh, custodial items out to these different areas. So they've been, we've been working with them, and we're trying to grow that along the way and um, provide that, provide a, a good service to our folks and try to limit our limited uh, resources that we have. Peter Crump, we've had several issues there over the last couple of years we've been trying to work on and some of the bathrooms, the, the floors just kind of remain slick. So we've, we've, been, we've done everything we can think of as far as, as we uh, strip the floor, we put uh, different, the different ventilation systems in there to try to warrant that, but the custodians 
along with uh, logistics are working on trying to clean that area, making sure that uh, all the equipment is utilized properly and, and working properly. They're part of our pony system that works around the area and delivers and picks up mail and uh, shipping and receiving and those disposable items, we go out and pick it up and we've, I've charged them to have that done by the end of the summer, the different locations, picking up all technology, anything that needs to be disposed of, they work with that. And uh, Dr. Moore's charged us with cleaning the warehouse. We're working on that part of it. We've, we've gotten rid of a, a ton of stuff there that's no longer necessary. And then there are also the textbook depository. They, they deliver and pick up all those textbooks from the different areas and we supply it as, as we receive it from curriculum. Next slide. And please stop me if you need me to stop. Maintenance, you can see that we have a bulk of the items here. And I'm going to preface this too along with those other items. You know, we couldn't do any, very much of any of this without the federal dollars like in CNP or the ETF money that we've been receiving from the state the last couple of years. Every one of these items that you see right here is ETF money because the budget that we're, we're provided with uh, the, fund, the funding sources that we have is just not adequate enough to take on some of these things. And what we've tried to utilize here too is our architects and engineers that know our systems and help them help us grade these things of what's most critical, what could shut down a building tomorrow. And then, you know, we want to do a little lipstick. We've got some painting jobs going on at, at Goodwin and Capitol Heights that we're going to begin working on. And uh, we've worked out a deal with, with paving a, a few parking lots down there at the bottom that you can see. Uh, we've allowed a group that's doing the Court Street construction. They're using a corner of uh, the Bellingrath, old Bellingrath property there, and in return, they're going to provide the services to pave these parking lots that you see here. We just supply the materials with that. Okay, next slide. Maintenance, 34 workers spread across the different trades, 10,142 work orders completed uh, year to date. You've got, you saw some of those statistics from before, 1,500 HVAC work orders first week of 18, 19 HVAC work orders first week of school of 19. Just this past month, 41 HVAC work orders last year, uh, then 15 this year. What that's allowed us to do, and that's a lot of that train contract, you'll see down there, we've saved the district as far as installing new systems by utilizing, being able to utilize our staff for installs approximately three quarters of a million dollars. Just one example there, the South Lawn Elementary Rooftop HVAC unit, we had it quoted at $31,000. Our people installed it for roughly $15,000. So that's, that's what we've been able to do with some of this stuff. And again, if we didn't have the ETF money, we wouldn't be able to do very much of these. Next slide. Security. Security has worked on a lighting survey for all the, to evaluate all the exterior lighting, and that's something we're wanting to complete now with the electrical services contract that went in there. And I know we're still working on some of those performance contracts that we saw, LED Solutions, Alabama Power, and I'll be coming back to you again with a, with a conglomerate of those together. But that's what we're working on too. That's something we want to press ahead with because I think that's very important for the safety and security of our people. I mean, when they're out there at those buildings late at night and you're, you have lights out or not very good lighting, you, that's a safety and security issue there. Camera upgrade, we'll talk about that much more on the technology area, but they worked in conjunction with, with uh, technology because they use the cameras more than anybody. And they're the ones that can tell you know, where the weaknesses are in the schools. And they also, technology went out to the schools and visited with the administration there to kind of get their input of what they would like to see as well with that. Upgrading intercoms, and I don't have to spend a whole lot of time there. If your intercom's down and you had an active shooter come in your building, you can get, get your checkbook out. So we definitely have to be doing these things and upgrading these intercom systems throughout the district. And then uh, just some of the, the bottom prefacing of what was up top. We're still in that planning phase, working with uh, the electricians on that. <coughs> Next slide. So incidents responded to by security. You can go across the districts. You can see currently we're at 2,407. Uh, 2019-20 elementary, 144 incidents. 
1,021 and 636 in the high school. You can see the overtime that our guys put in, all the different hours and uh, pr pr uh, provided by the district. That's paid for by the district at no cost to the schools. And then you can see all the background checks that we've done, 4,760 as of March 1, 2020. That's something that I wish my, my children's district did and the other schools that I've been in as well. We check every person that comes into our school that the schools provide us the documentation on of who's going on a field trip, who's visiting the school. Anybody that's coming into that area, our folks are checking that in our office there. Next slide. Technology, uh, we've been doing a gaggle pilot. They monitor our website system and we, we provide that out. Right now it's just a, a, something that we've been running a pilot for, nothing that we brought to the district about because we're looking at several different ones there. We've been working on the Cisco phone install throughout the district. We had so many problems with the, with the phones throughout the system that uh, we, we had to do something and I think that's going well. We had a little bit of a hang up with uh, the long distance and some of the issues, but they've resolved that and, and have been working on that, getting that around the district. The camera upgrade, and it, you'll see it, the numbers in the next slide, but it's a, approximately a $600,000 project that ITS is doing, and they're, they're now out in the schools. I know they were working on Robert E. Lee last week on that weather permitting. They'll be able to get the outside stuff done as well. Server upgrades, which that's very important. We've had issues with our server upgrades. That's a proposed thing right there. We're, again, hoping like Mr. Watts was talking about. Mr. Watts was talking about getting that funding for next year. That's something that we're looking at, you know, if and when we get that budget <coughs> money for those things that we could provide that as well. But it's something that's very critical to the needs of our district. Next slide. And again, technology, you can see they've, create, they've completed 6,393 work orders for that. And you can see in that uh, third bullet there, we're installing roughly a thousand new cameras throughout the district. We have a lot of old analog cameras that, that needed, needed to be replaced and some that are just out. That's what those guys are out there doing, replacing and working on now. And again, all of this was paid for through the ETF fund. Again, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing and, and do some of the things that we're doing without that. Next slide, please. Transportation, uh, we recently went back, we had gone with Verizon initially, but we switched to Samsara, which that's gonna help us. We, we're not, we were looking at a routing software to, to try to uh, make sure we if, make our routes as, as efficient as we can. This new GPS, which is the same cost as the Verizon GPS has helped with that, and, and it's gonna be very, very good. So if Ms. Briars calls me up, and says, Chad, I had a bus pass me over on Court Street just a minute ago, and they were flying. They, they were, I can, I can go into that software. She doesn't have to know the name of it. And she doesn't have to have the bus number. She can tell me it was one of our vehicles, and I can do a proximity search on that one, on that site, and find out who it was, when it was, and, and go after them with that. And that, that, that accountability is very important to us, and I think we've seen, a lot of good things with the GPS, just in operations, just the white fleet, when we put that in, we've saved the district approximately 2,000 miles a week on, on fuel costs with, with what, we're, what we've been able to kind of cut out on some of those vehicles. So I know it's been very good with those things. And then the special needs buses, many of our, need, our special needs buses are coming up in the fleet renewal, which we have some of this money that you see there, approximately $2 million. Some of that's provided by the state, but again, if we continue to get the bond money, ETF money with this, with this coming up budget, we'll be able to fulfill the rest of those, new, those special needs buses with new buses with that. Next slide. A snapshot there, we have approximately 10, 210 bus routes, uh, field trips, 825 general education so far, 609 special education, 206 extracurricular and we're just about to get busy with those field trips here coming up in the spring. So. And that is down from last year because of one of Mr. Uh, Mitchell's kind of things that he's put into place is to cut down on some of those, some of those uh, different field trips and make sure that they're really focused on you know, the curriculum part of things or 
of course, we got to get to our athletic events like we just saw with Robert E. Lee. Ramp program, uh, service and eight schools, last drop is at, uh, drop off is at 530. 21st century, uh, serving Goodwin Middle, last is at 6 p.m. And they do monthly inspections on each one of those buses. But our buses start out, some of our buses start out at 445 in the morning. And you can see some of our last ones get through at 6 p.m. at night. And we don't pay those bus drivers enough for what they do and, and the service they provide. I mean, it's it's about 12,000 students a day that we're transporting. Next slide. Chad, Chad wait a minute. Yes, ma'am. Go back to that slide. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking, you know, I just for my knowledge, are you saying in that first bullet that we have 54 special education buses? No, ma'am. Routes. Okay. Routes, yes, okay, okay. Because yes. I knew you were, but how many do we have then? How many special education buses do we have? Buses, about approximately 20. Okay, and when did we buy those? Because I know 2011. we 2011. Okay. A lot of there's some 2008 and there's some 2011. Okay. I know many of them are coming off free. That's what. The year. And the state provides. Ten years. Ten years. The state you provides. Have, I thought that they were ten years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I did. So they're. You know, I did the math just a minute ago. When you divide that, what you're you're looking at about ninety-seven thousand dollars a bus. Yes, ma'am. But then when we're going to turn around and sell those for less than five. Oh, yeah. I mean, I understand now because of the insurance. I mean, that, yeah, I, I get and, that, but I was like, I didn't know they cost that much. And understand, too, that, that the state provides us a lot of that funding that we're able. Okay. They give us that money each year. <laughs> okay. This has been the first year that it's been fully funded from the state in a long time. Okay. But, yeah, we, we end up paying monies out through the, through the local on, on our uh, bus and some of those things. But we're, we're blessed that the state does help us with what we're doing. Okay. Next one. And then operations, just some of the things that I've, I've hit on. I know y'all have heard some of those things. The central office consolidation that we talked about a while back, and I'll give some better numbers when you see the next slide. We are working on getting PSC and Fair West vacated at the moment. I kind of backed up and punted when I think some people got confused initially when we were talking about the central office consolidation. When I first was talking about it, I was talking about curriculum only, and then it got kind of put in there that everybody coming out of here. So we got some architects involved, and they helped us out with a plan, and it's doable and feasible over there. Again, funding is, is the issue with that, and we're waiting on, on some items with that. You'll see some of the figures and numbers on the next page. One that everybody, I'm sure, wants to know some more about, and we'll talk about it again on the next page, is the BTW Holy Cross renovate and add on the Holy Cross project timeline. August 2021 is what we're shooting for, weather permitting. And we're just about finished up with a conceptual phase and, and getting ready to rubber stamp that master plan. And then security vestibules. I've been working on that and throughout the district. A lot of our areas, and we'll talk about where we're going to go looking at those things, where we want to create that secured space where people can't just walk right into our schools mm -hmm. and get down our hallways. We want to have yeah. a way to, Block. barring a word, trap them into an area so that they can't get yeah. down our hallways yeah. mm -hmm. towards our teachers or students. And again, you, if you saw the security incidents, there's many of those instances where we have people going down the hall. You saw one on the news just last week uh, with someone that came into our location and, and it abducted a child with that. So we're, we, we're, our principal there was very vigilant in making sure that didn't turn into something more and she did a fantastic job with her faculty and staff making sure we handled that right and, and kept that child safe. Next slide. So consolidation project, deferred maintenance, and you can see the different areas there. I won't bore you with all those bullets. The total cost analysis, utilities, is approximately a quarter of a million dollars a year, 224000 per year that we're spending on those different areas. The deferred maintenance is well over a million dollars with that. I gave you mainly just HVAC. Now, the fuse is, is a roof, and I indicated that at the bottom of it, but I mean, there's constant maintenance at these old buildings that that's hard to put a dollar figure on. But you see right there, we're just talking about a million and a half dollars that if we, if we went in to just make these old buildings decent, <laughs> that's what that would get us to with utilities and, and some of the deferred maintenance with that. The BTW uh, project down there, 
So we completed a programming with the architects over there at BTW. They had already completed one a couple of years before. They came back and updated that where we sat down with each and every teacher that Dr. Starks helped us identify. They came in and, and provided their input into the planning, that the, the programming that they had done before and updated that. They presented us with a conceptual master plan at this point. You can see we've the superintendent, the CFO, BTW principal, and one of their faculty representatives have just looked at that. And what's been going on since that, the early site work, we met with the engineers and architects on that because that will affect the master plan being if you have to raise the level of a building over here, it may change the plan a little bit where you have to add some steps or, or a handicap ramp or something like that. So we don't have a completed master plan on that. But once we get the final master plan, like you see there at the bottom, we'll definitely be getting that out to the stakeholders and here at the board and let you guys see a, a completed master plan with those things. And that should be very soon in, in the near future. The security vestibules, we really want to focus, put our focus on the areas that don't have the security or resource officers there first. We want to have them in all our locations that, that don't have that. Like if you go into Park Crossing, you notice they have that stoppage right there. We want that in each location, but we're giving that priority to those folks that don't have the, the security and resource officers. So apologize for being long on this first one. I wanted to give you a little bit of background on that and let you see what, where we are, what we're working on, and we're gonna continue to work on, on these things. And I just really appreciate when y'all reach out to me. Ms. Breyers reached out to me last week on a, on a grass cutting <laughs> job that, we, you know, that was near and dear to the community with those things. So we were able to get that done. I, I can't do it all by myself. I appreciate all what you do. I appreciate our stakeholders letting us know what's going on, teachers, principals, Anybody that gives us input on that, we're just going to continue to work hard and appreciate all your support. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Mr. Um, Anderson, just yes, one quick question. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Beard, what, what do you remember what year he started? Who was that? Mr. Beard. Miss, <laughs> Miss Beard. Oh, Miss Beard. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why I wear these. Miss Beard. Yeah. She came in with me a little bit after I started. Okay. I hired her in that September, October range. Okay. That was awesome. But, done a fantastic job so normally you don't lose money on CNP mm -hmm. and so we knew that and we figured tried to figure out what we were doing that we could correct so that we would make money especially with the number of uh, free and reduced lunches and things like that, that we have and then adding some other programs that you know feeding type things that would benefit the kids but also would produce revenue for the system and so that's how with that hard work, we managed to get to where we are now. And Dr. Starks really appreciated you allowing the teachers to come in and tell you what they needed rather than just doing something. They really appreciated that and I wanted to pass that on to you. Yes, ma'am, and I can tell you the, the conceptual plan that's there, very close to what their teachers requested. They did make a few modifications. Mm -hmm. I know one of the sound rooms they were requesting was mm -hmm. like a thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. They had just done WSFA's sound room, which was about 500 square feet, and they matched the two up. So, you know, when all this comes to fruition, the sound room at BTW will be as equipped and large as WSFA's sound room. So. Right. And they appreciate that yes, because they so they knew what, what they needed. And with you allowing them to have input, they just really appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. I would love to see it all completed. We just need that money. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, Dr. Nettles? She has laryngitis. Oh, she has laryngitis. We're going to table that till our next meeting. Uh, yes, she has laryngitis and can't speak to us. Um, oh, I guess that's me next. <clears throat> All right, we're going to have before us a couple of uh, agreements, service agreements, and I, I wanted to take a, a minute to just talk about what we're looking at. <clears throat> the, the people that are listed here, Josh Blades and Quentin Hawkins, are widely respected lobbyists 
and they come to us highly recommended. Um, in our quest to have a referendum placed before the people, everybody here knows we have, we have worked for about a year and a quarter trying to get to the spot we wanted to get to. And it's three phases. The first phase we have gotten through, which was uh, going through the Montgomery County Commission. And now we're on to the second phase, and that is uh, the state legislative delegation. I find these to be murky waters. Um, you know, Claudia and I have spent a good bit of time down at the State House, but it is, it's not our expertise. And the two gentlemen in question, what they bring to us is that they're there day in and day out every day that there's a legislative day. And things happen quickly down there. They, um, things can turn, turn on a dime. And I don't think, uh, we are not equipped to handle that in trying to get an ad valorem tax to the citizens. Um, they use their abilities, they offer strategic counsel they will get us hopefully to the desired outcome, which is the money that we need for Mr. Anderson to take care of um, the schools, the physical plants, Mr. Mitchell to get into the children's hands what they need to learn. And to everybody else here, I mean, what, what we need takes money. I wish, I, I wish it didn't, but it does. Um, they are experts in politics. And I'm going to be the first to tell you I'm not. And I don't think there's anybody sitting here that's quite as expert as these two gentlemen are. They can advocate for us. They can manage complicated political problems. They can help us with external communications. Because sometimes we have had, and here in recent weeks, we've had some... Uh, some difficult communications problems where we've been battered. And I think that they can help with that. So in presenting these to you, you know, I, I hope we can approve these. We have come a really, really long way, and we've still got a distance to go to get here. But if we keep in mind it's all about our children, it is all about having a good place for them to walk into every day, a good, clean, secure, safe place. That, um, that's what I, that's my pre presentation to you, that I think that we need these gentlemen's help to get this through the state legislature and on to the people of Montgomery. Madam President, I, I agree with you totally. And my reason for saying that is, we, are, we sit on this board. There are things that have slipped through the cracks because we didn't have the expertise to do some things. And when we're asking the community to help us, we need to be able to have someone out front uh, to do some of the things that we are not going to be privy to doing. We won't be in, at the legislature when they're in session all day, every day, and these people are. And we got to stop trying to please everybody because you can't please everybody. We need to please uh, the system in that we do what we need to do for our children. And we haven't always done that. And this is an opportunity. We don't know some of the ins and outs of what the lobbyists do. And churches have lobbyists, you know, so we're not, we wouldn't be doing anything that they have not done. And I think. To be intelligent, you need to know what it is that you can't do you need to know and limits, get somebody yeah. to do it. Mm -hmm. And not to say we're not intelligent, but we don't know the ins and outs, like you've said, about what they can do. And no matter what we do here tonight, people are going to complain because there, there are people out there that are doing everything they possibly can to block this. Yes, and we know that. Yep. So, I mean, we have to be, step up to the plate, and like they say, if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. Mm -hmm. So I just feel mm -hmm. like we just need to do what we need to do, and they're going to talk about us anyway. You know, that's the, uh, we are their topic of conversation. 
So we just <laughs> think about it and do what we think we need to do for our children. Thank you. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I, I will tell you when I first read this, you know, I, went, I was sh in, in awe, uh, but I gave myself some time, well, we gave ourselves, you know, some time to reflect, do a little bit more research, um, and I'll be honest with you, I found myself acting like the very people who are trying to hold us down saying that you know you're spending too much money here we have to place priorities and our children and you know i'll get criticized for even making that statement but our children are our priority and if we are going to do what's best we do need a level of expertise yes we are intelligent but i tell you i have very limited intelligence when it comes to governmental practices and the laws and the nuances that it's going to take to maneuver uh, the halls of that state house. So after having some time, and my colleague here used to say, our children can't wait. Wow. Our children can't wait while we, you know, go through all of, you know, the the little, yeah, you know, the various practices and the games that people play. We need to be serious about this. And I liked what you said a few minutes ago. They're going to talk about us anyway. Yes. Uh, one of my colleagues heard me say this. I'm ready to do some things here in Montgomery, Alabama. So let's give them something to talk about. Well, I'm going to take a little phrase from, from my Rotary Club. They talk about polio, eradicating polio, we're this close, and I think we're this close now. I think it's critical, so. Thank okay. you. If I may. Sure. Okay. Ladies, I, I'm, and I mean no disrespect, but we all have sat up here and we said, you know, we don't, you know, we don't, we're not legislature. We're, we're not people that, that do the math, but I think, it is our due diligence to, to go and check. And I'm, and I'm gonna tell you I checked, okay? We're, we're looking for lobbyists. We're looking for let, experts let, no, can I, that can help okay, us but can, here. I had, did not interrupt you. And I mean, no, I did not inter interrupt you. I just wanna be heard. Yep. I agree with the property tax. I'm saying now, we've just spent $64,000 on an attorney to get a resolution to go from 10 to 19. We went to Elton Dean, or y'all went to Elton and I appreciate it, who told us 22 for free. A lobbyist, just South University, we pay $3,000 a month to lobby everything. Students first paid their lobbyists, $60,000 a year. Lobbyists meet three days a week. If you look at the math, and I did it, you want to pay $12,000 a month to this contract, $3,000 to this contract, that's 15. Multiply that by six, let me finish. By three. You've got 90, okay. No, three months. You, okay. Oh, excuse me, four months. Okay. That, so It goes to July 1st. It's four months. Okay. What, call it whatever, 90, we're at not, just go my way. If it's four months, then we'll subtract two. We're looking at 90,000, three days a week, 14 weeks, 42 days. That's $2,142 a day. All I, okay, let's say I agreed with what you're saying. I have heard, uh, this is a fact, that w why not, I mean, the, people, I feel like I'm going, we're women going into a, to get our car fixed and we've got an oil problem and suddenly they're telling us the whole car's broke because we've got, you know, gas pump, everything else not working. I, I'm not so sure that we don't have a ring in our nose and they're taking us for a ride. Here's something that, that, that we should consider as women. Did you know that if we, we thought about negotiating with these people, we can do actually a bonus at the end of it. If we win, then we go, hey, dude, we'll pay you that 90, but let, let's keep it at about, you know, 3,000 a month, like what's average. And if y'all want to go a little above average and go, okay, let's go four. 
but at the end of it, and we get what we're looking for, we'll pay you the rest of it as a bonus because we won. Why have we not sat around and talked about negotiating? Well, That's all I'm saying. All right, and I will I'll, say I'll this. Stop. There has been some negotiations done with this. At 12000 And the uh, total amount of this I've got should be about... In, in profession, I'm sorry. Wrong profession. So did Elton Dean. He did it for free. Well, he doesn't Lying do anything. It's an ongoing thing, Lisa. It's not, not just three days a, a week. It's ongoing. It's until the job is... I've said my piece. Y'all do it. Okay. Um, I, I think we're on a Titanic when we do it. That's okay. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything tonight, but I am. Um, first of all, I am very sad and angry that we're even having to talk about lobbyists. Because every single person that lives in Montgomery should be talking about this and talking about these kids. Now, I'm going to say some things. And maybe I'll get fired from being on the board. I don't know. But I, I, I've got to say my piece about this. I wasn't alive when the Civil Rights Movement started. But my people were. And they made decisions then. And that's why we're sitting in this situation now. Come on now. now let me just say this. I grew up in domestic violence, child abuse, alcohol, and everything. I'm not going to talk about me. But school was my safe place. And when I was in seventh grade, I made a commitment to God and to Christ that everything in me, I was going to commit to this city to help a child if it was in my power to do so. Unfortunately, the same people that look like me are the ones that are blocking this. They should be first in line to say, we want to support you and we want to support the black children in this community because that's what we're talking about. And when I ran for school board, I want y'all to know as the first person that said that, that it's a race problem. I wasn't able to speak up in the 60s because I wasn't born and I was too young, but I'll be damned. I'm going to speak up for it now and it's going to make a lot of people mad. My day started this morning at 730 with a call from Montgomery Police. For those of you who don't know, I work at Child Protect because a six-year-old baby kindergarten little girl has been being raped over the last several months by a 51 year old neighbor that's how my day started you know how it came out because her grades started dropping and she was having behavior problems but we didn't have the counselors in place and we didn't have the teachers that knew how to respond to that except to make her go stand in the hall day after day mm -hmm. And you know what? She finally, because her mother wanted to know what was going on, so she told her. This has been going on for months. So she told her. And when she came to us today, she said, if I tell y'all, are you going to be mad? Am I going to be in trouble? Because we don't have the funding for that. Because the black and brown children are not important to people that look like me. They're not important. But they're important to me. And then we got another call at 1 o'clock. 10-year-old boy fighting, grades are bad, fighting, grades are bad for a year because a 24-year-old cousin has been molesting him over a year. Now, that's two children, and I know that's a small percent of the 29,000, but let me tell you something. Our community and these children that we all ran, this is not about money. $100,000 or $500,000 we pay an attorney and we pay these lobbyists because we have to. Because people that look like me are not stepping up. It's not about money and we all know that. And I'll tell you this, every fight that's in me, I'm fighting for those kids because there are 29,000 kids out there and the majority of them are black and brown and they live in poverty and they live in communities that are they witness horrific things and traumatic events every single day and school is their refuge and that is the only way that they're going to get out of that and the only way that they're going to better themselves and it is up to us yes. and it's up to you and it's up to every single person that lives in Montgomery County and shame on them if they're not supporting it. I hope every one of them is listening tonight 
and that's fine. You don't want to support me anymore, that's fine. I didn't run to be supported. I ran to help these children and everything in me. And I said I wasn't going to say anything tonight, but I'm going to tell you, the spirit is stronger than me. And I hope it's stronger than everybody in this community. So vote how you want to, but I'm voting for kids. And I've y'all see me on the street corner, and I'm going to have my thing out there. So here you go. Yeah. You know, I just want the people of Montgomery to know that that is why this board is here. We only have one option, and that is to fight and win for the children of Montgomery because they deserve to have a quality education. Is there any uh, any other discussion on this topic? Well, you looked at me, and usually, you know, I always have something to say. I didn't after Jana, actually, but since you looked, um, I just want to applaud Jana. Yes. I think Ms. Bryce has sat with me long enough and made the phone calls and my, my complaints about what you just said. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time coming, so I'm so thankful that you are here, that you said it out loud, because when I say it, I get a different reaction. But when you said it has merit, because you've called, you put a spotlight on the, on the issue that's always been talked about in Montgomery, but often ignored because of the miles it comes out of. So I too am in support of hiring we, the lobbyists. And I do understand, and, and I just got to say this, and it's gonna be what you said. It's so sad that we are, our children have to jump through hoops and hurdles. When Pike Road needed and Avalorum passed, there was nobody standing in the way. When Montgomery asked, everybody that, came, that was under a rock came out to stand in the way. So unfortunately, we have to spend the money because of the very things that Jenna said, racism. That's the bottom line. So we sit here fighting for children. It's unfortunate that, and we trust me with the little money we have, Mr. Watts, thank you, because he's mm -hmm. cut everything to the bare bone. Mm -hmm. We're all just lucky to be sitting here right now. Mm -hmm. But this has got to happen. The Avalorum is not about the individuals on the board. It is about, about children, children, period. We are all in agreement on that. And I, I just want to say one thing. Again, I'm saying I'm all for property taxes. But in clarification, you said four months. It's six months on this contract. It's four months. I just read it. It says July 1 on the 12000 It says May. I know y'all don't care about taxpayers' money, obviously, on this, at least right now. It's, I was wrong on the 90000 so let me go on record. I was wrong on the ninety. It would be 84000 I'll leave it at that. And it's all taxpayer money going to children, and I think they want us to take care of their children. I mean, we've talked about... In fact, we have a contract here t tonight talking about children. That's money going to something. I mean, you don't spend money when it comes to children. You're line. going to educate or incarcerate. Just That's make your idea. decision. Wow. It's an investment. Absolutely. With that, Dr. Moore, have you any recommendations for us tonight? I do. I do. I have several, and we've been asked to do them individually. So yes. I'll start with the first one. Um, I recommend approval of the, and this is a personnel report, certified personnel. Do I have a motion? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. I move that we approve the super, superintendent's recommendation of the personnel report certified. I second. Um, any discussion? All yeah. Yes, um, because on the addendum. Okay, if I vote yes we're on not the on, addendum. We're not on, we're just no, on the first what one. What I'm saying is that, because no, my problem with A was what we have on the addendum. So if I voted no, if I voted yes with y'all on the first, but, but no on the, the uh, addendum, I'm not, I'm not voting for, I'm looking at number one. Yeah. One. The really addendum take, number one is clarification of right. what's on. So, but what I'm saying on personnel report, person number one, one has been taken off of that, right? 
to go into the addendum. It's just the terms at the very end in that last column. Okay. Just the terms that that was not the right terminology, okay. so I changed the terminology. In our minds, it means the same way, but we believe it doesn't. Right, I got you. That's a big difference. Okay. At the end, but, yeah. The calls. Okay. Instead of that. Okay. In, any other discussion on this? All in favor, show with a show of hands. Uh, opposed? Okay. We have six and one. Uh, Dr. Okay, I, re I recommend approval of the personnel report certified addendum number one. I yeah. move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation to approve um, B, the personnel report certified addendum number one. I second. Any discussion? All in favor with a show of hands and opposed? Okay, six and one. Dr. Moore? I recommend approval of the personnel report classified personnel. I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation uh, to accept C, personnel report classified personnel. I second. Any discussion? All in favor, show of hands. That's a unanimous. Uh, I recommend approval of the personnel report classified addendum number one. I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation to approve D, the personnel report, classified addendum number one. A second. Any discussion? All in favor with a show of hands. Uh, Erica, was, you, were you, was oh, your I'm hand sorry, up? Was up yes. okay. That's unanimous. Okay. okay. I recommend approval of the board minutes from February 6, 2020, special call meeting, February 11, 2020, work session. February 11th, 2020, special call meeting. February 25th, 2020, board meeting. I move. Oh, go ahead. I move that we accept the board minutes from February 6th, 11th, 2020, special call meeting. Uh, February 25th, board meeting as supervised. I'm the I'll vice second. superintendent. Okay. Discussion? All in favor with a show of hands. That's unanimous. I recommend approval of the Life Academy Charter Contract. Okay. Madam President, I move that we approve the superintendent's recommendation of F Life Academy Charter Contract. I second. I second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor with a show of hands. One, two, three, four, five, and opposed? Two. Okay, there's five and two. And on the QH Consulting, oh, excuse okay. me. <laughs> this fine. <laughs> I recommend approval of the QH <laughs> Consulting LLC <laughs> Services Agreement. Madam President, I move that we accept the su superintendent's recommendation for QH Consulting LLC Services Agreement. I, I second. second. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor with a show of hands and opposed? And we have six and one. I recommend approval of the lobbying engagement letter. Madam President, I move that we accept the recommendation from the superintendent on H, lobbying engagement letter. I second. Any discussion? All in favor with a show of hands. And opposed, six and one. Um, yeah, I would like to do that. We, we've got somebody kind of special in our uh, audience tonight that we would like to, to recognize. Uh, Mrs. Jay Jones is our new communications officer here. And um, we're thrilled to have you on board. Uh, our next meeting, uh, we, I think Chair, we go on spring Madam break. Madam Chair, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Life is here. Do you want to let them? Life is here. Life Academy. Life Academy. Life Academy. Do you want to yes. wave yes. or say please, anything? Uh, yes. We, uh, congratulations. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
this is going to be a good year. You know, Montgomery Public Schools are moving forward. Yes. And we're getting we're getting closer and closer to to fulfilling a lot of dreams for a lot of a lot of people. Uh, I think we go on spring break uh, for the rest of this month, and uh, our next meeting is Tuesday, April 14th. And we are adjourned. We don't meet again. This is our last meeting. For the month. Yes. Right. We don't meet until April. No. I, I, I was I was like, look. But you, you said what you said. And for people.